Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Small Cap Discoveries conference call. Today on our call, we have Neil Seaman back to give us an update on Rewe Corp. Again, Rewe trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol RIWI. The company is trading at $2.70 with roughly 18 million shares outstanding or about a $49 million market cap. And now I can hand it over to Paul Andreola. Great. Thanks, uh, Trev. Uh, Neil, great to have you back. Um, you just came out with your Q4 numbers recently, so we wanted to get you on here to talk a little bit about uh, 2020 and uh, ideally uh, how things look uh, going forward as well. Uh, but listen, for those that might not be familiar with uh, Rewe Corp, why don't you give them the, the quick elevator pitch? Uh, th thanks, Paul. Thank you, Trevor, and great to be back here. Yeah, Rewe stands for Real-Time Interactive Worldwide Intelligence. We're a global trend tracking and predictive analytics firm. We run digital surveys and digital ad tests in every country in the world, uh, largely on a recurring revenue basis, uh, focused predominantly in four areas, China, um, and focused on uh, also public health security, the investment and economic uh, space as well. And then fourthly, the humanitarian uh, aid uh, community. So those are our four revenue portfolios of focus. Fantastic. Um, okay, so on to, to 2020. Um, you guys had a, a fantastic year. It's a record year. Uh, revenues were up 47 percent. Um, why don't you tell us what happened last year? What, uh, you know, the world was suffering COVID. You guys managed to grow your business uh, quite nicely last year. Yeah, thank you. Um, it, you know, it's a tough year. I mean, it, it was a tough year for every company I know. Um, and at the end of the day, for us, it's just, it was, we, we went into systematic sales overdrive mode. Um, so, you know, we, we, we essentially professionalized our sales force uh, in 2020. So we invested actually, this had begun in 2019. So I don't want to suggest it was uh, 2020 alone. Uh, but so we started to see the dividends from 2019 and then we doubled down in 2020. Um, and then what, what is increasingly of significance, and I, I do think COVID uh, contributed to this, was a discipline on focus. Rewe historically has been distracted by um, interesting um, distractions that, that, that you know, because there is so much we can do. But so we need now to uh, turn away business and, and focus on the right things for quality revenue. So that's what, in a nutshell, that's what happened in 2020. So, um, so last year was your third year profitability. Um, you grew profits again this year, albeit uh, you're taxable. So on a, on a pre-tax basis, um, you guys, um, you, you were, um, well, higher than last year, but lower if you take uh, account after tax. Um, what um, you know? Can, can we can we expect um, you know? Simple question: profitability going forward. Are we now sort of well entrenched in, in a profitable business now? Thank you. I mean, thanks, Paul. I mean, yeah, we we care about all the foundational markers of value. So profit, um, revenue, in particular, what I call quality revenues. Um, so this means recurring revenues with amazing, amazing clients um, and then partnerships to grow, right? These, these partnerships in the, in the data sector are important. Of course, we care about cash in the bank and other markers of value. Um, so we are what I like to call a profit-driven and purpose-driven uh, company. So uh, yeah, we're, we're hungry for profits. We're hungry for revenues, all the right markers of value. Thank you. Right on. And, and so th that leads me to my next question. Uh, as far as the, the revenue makeup, um, can you give us a sense of how much your revenue is what we'd call repeatable? Because I know you guys have sort of contract based revenue. And then how much is truly recurring? What, what can you tell us about the makeup of the revenue? Thanks, Paul. So we changed, uh, for those of you who uh, read our MDNA um, with some scrutiny, uh, our definition of recurring a little bit. So um, we, we, we now put about 80% of our revenues defined as recurring um, in nature. And the way we define recurring very specifically means, um, you know, so we've got, we've got a, a contract that we've had of long six month duration, and then that's cemented into actually a partnership um, that where we've integrated sales forces. And so we can, we can get more revenue. Um, 
so we, we like that because there's two market tests there, right? You've got the market test of having won a significant deal uh, over a long duration of time. And then there's the market test of having integrated your, your sales forces because there are so many data platforms out there, but it's the ones where you integrate your sales force so you're, you're elevated in value. So that's what we define as recurring. We always want to have about, um, so we always want to have 10, 20% in non-recurring simply because those we feel are opportunistic emergent strategies that could be you know really amazing clients over the long term perfect um and um the uh the 2021 um so 2020 and 2019 you spent a fair bit of time investing in new salespeople, sort of new new initiatives new directions um what kind of investments do you guys anticipate making in 2021? Thank you. Um, so, you know, the type, at the end of the day, it's all about people, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you're always, you're always scouting for talent and uh, there's opportunistic talent that, that, that can, uh, that can come. Uh, the opportunistic talent or people that can come uh, that that I'm always hunting for are people who can deliver greater value to to clients and so and, and in particular the nature of the clients that we have now and want to get more of in the future they tend to be more data sophisticated more technically sophisticated so you know uh, th that's the type of investment uh, uh, that we'd make and in individuals that um, uh, that want to work with us. So there's there's a, real, a long range of folks who want to work with us, um, but there's 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 no you know we're not we're not on the hunt for uh, for M and A opportunities. Um, uh, Daniel, do you want to pipe in on on that one? Uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, thanks, Dan. And I echo Neil's comments. We're all looking for great people, and we're also investing um, in our, our technology as well. We're we're trying out different things. Uh, seeing what works and how we can broaden our scope and reach new audiences, especially in the different focus uh, groups that we have in the four revenue portfolios. Uh, what we have currently technology wise is great, but there are other solutions that we can provide based on feedback from clients or potential clients that we want to invest in to uh, make our technology even better. Um, on the M&A front, as Neil mentioned, it's, it's not a hot button issue for us, but of course, we're listening. We always look for ways to improve our business. If there are good uh, opportunities for us, we want to seriously look at that. But I would say the first order of business is to organically grow our business and focus and um, just see see what happens. And we're, we're laser focused and that's what we're doing in 2021. Mm -hmm. So uh, you guys, you guys still have a, a fairly sizable amount of cash in the in the balance sheet. Um, so is an investor to expect that uh, you know, apart from you know some hires and maybe some new initiatives in terms of some new technologies, um, really is the cash going to sit there, or you know, what 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 do you see the cash being used for in the next little while? Neil, I'll ask Neil and then oh, yeah. uh, I, I wasn't sure if it was Neil Gordon for not can Yeah, thanks, thanks, Paul. Yeah, no, uh, technical. Uh, I want to just emphasize that Daniel said about technical operational excellence is really, really important. And, and you know, um, yeah, that what what we're learning uh, in the ne let's just call it the next generation of machine learning is that there are some incredible things um, on the feature side that can be done and on the data science side that can be done that make that that make the tool more user friendly um for uh, for say you know uh, different uh, clients in the investment sector that's the type of technology style investment and people style investment that we'd want to make uh, again that's not not gonna burn up a ton of cash but it's certainly um, something that uh, we feel could could uh, could generate recurring revenue and quality revenues. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe, maybe this is a question for Daniel, but I mean, we saw a slight decrease in in gross margins um, last year, and I think even over the year before. Um, is is that a trend? And if if so, you know, what's driving the, the change in gross margins right now? I would say. 
you know, margins are interesting to look at, but as a company who is looking to grow, um, we're trying out different things. Uh, we're not satisfied being a smallish, you know, profitable Canadian company. Uh, we have uh, big dreams to grow. And in order to do that, uh, we'll need to spend on, on different things. And so uh, to try out things, it, it costs some money. And we're going to use those as um, test cases to see what sticks, what doesn't stick. So um, we're not a fully mature business in, in the margin sense. So I would say to not put so much stock into reviewing the margins to that, that extent, you know, we're not a, a retail company where, you know, you track the margins in that way. Um, we have a top line and a bottom line. So in the middle where our cash goes out, we're trying out different things in order for us to scale from where we are now to where we want to get to. So, um, mm -hmm. I said, we're, we're trying on different things with our cash in the bank and see what, what goes because we can't just grow, you know, just what we're doing and do more of it. Uh, we've got to try out different things too in order for us to really uh, boost our growth. Mm -hmm. one, um, just yeah. to pick up on that, I mean, one, one expenditure that does, that falls into that category is um, that just the partnership integration costs. Mm -hmm. So that, that is, that is important. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're selective about partnerships and we want to ensure those partnerships um, are meaningful. And so in order to do that, sometimes associated with the, the cost of sales can include uh, inter integration costs, which, you know, uh, can be one-time costs, but inevitably do, do, do affect the, uh, the margins. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you mentioned partners. Um, why don't we go back to 2020? Let, let, I, 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 if I recall correctly, you did partner up with, um, uh, with a group and it escapes me now, but give us a sense of the milestones, like really crystallize the milestones that you guys achieved in 2020, and then maybe some things we can look forward to in 2021. Um, thank you. I mean, milestone wise in 2020, um, I, I, I feel obviously that the core markers, um, you know, 47% year over year, Revenue growth, um, you know, third year uh, consecutively of profitability, those are really important uh, milestones. But beyond that, just the, the discipline on partnerships and the discipline on uh, a systematized and professionalized sales force, and then also the discipline on product. Um, so, uh, you know, we 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 now uh, we now can uh, sort of drive product out in a systematized way uh, with good robust customer feedback, uh, such that we know what's going to sell in the marketplace. So that that's a that's been a really critical milestone for us. Mm -hmm. uh, you um, you added a new head of sales last year. I think it was last year. Um, how, what what can you tell us about how things have gone now that you've you've added that big piece to your business? Yeah, thanks. It's been really important uh, for us. I mean, for those of you who are not on this call, who are not familiar with our history, I mean, we started off as a think tank, uh, you know, at a university, a think tank with a balance sheet, then it was company, and then, and then it matured into, into a public company, right? So, um, and then it's really only been um, since early in, in 2020, when we really built out the elements of, 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 uh, of that sales, sales force, which includes, um, you know, business development it means um uh sort of you know all the all the things that you know they talk about in harvard business review and all, all, all this stuff right you know quality lead generation um making sure the funnel is clear and demand generation all those pieces of the puzzle clear customer marketing materials customer stories all of those things are very valuable um, and then ensuring that we leverage and disseminate um, the amazing research materials and internal data that we're always collecting uh, to reach to reach buyers so that um, that's been really wonderful for me to see so you get um, what they call uh, you know qualified leads and you see you see very tangibly what are marketing qualified leads so it's just a way to qualify your lead generation it's a way for you to know who you should be chasing who you shouldn't be chasing so um by those measures uh, i i think it's been a very uh, strong success i don't know daniel if you have any color context on that uh yeah for, further to what neil said 
in the past where we come from, a lot of the sales were relational sales or through Neil Seaman as you know, founder, CEO, people in your personal Rolodexes. Um, and while that's good and all, when you're, you're growing from you know, zero, uh, that can only last so long. And with our growth um, you know, potential and our goals into the future, uh, in order for us to grow, uh, you need a s systematic way to, to generate leads from the whole host of international people who've never even heard of really or the kinds of solutions we can provide. And there's only so many hours in a day that, that we can do with our personal contact. So building out the, the strategic team and procedures on how to do that, we think we have a very good foundation starting uh, in the beginning of 2020 up to now and how we can use those uh, leads that we have never, never been able to, to generate from before, uh, how, to, how to cultivate those and ensure we can close the sales. So setting that all up has been, uh, you know, takes time uh, since the beginning of 2020 and we continue to, to use that as a, a way to boost our, our sales and outreach to uh, international clients. You know, I, so th that um, makes me think of another question. Do you guys, have you guys reached sort of critical mass where, um, you know, are you seeing more inquiries? Do, do people know you? Do potential clients know you or you're still, are you still going out there trying to have everybody learn who Rewe is and what they do? Um, how many calls are coming in or how many calls are going out? Maybe that's a way to explain it. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's always hard, hard. Thank you. It's always hard to measure. Um, so, uh, market awareness dramatically higher uh, than 12 months ago, 14 months ago. Um, you know, and there's different ways to measure that, whether it's inbound requests for interviews, whether it's, uh, whether it's uh, partnership, the partners in particular is a great way to measure it because that's an important, important test. So when the partners are coming to you, when it's just easier to onboard with a partner, um, that, that again is, is a measure of market awareness, certainly in the financial services sector. And, um, we, we need within our um, uh, humanitarian aid sector, we're extremely well known in the United States and Canada. I think we need to do a much better job of expanding in areas like the United Kingdom and, um, and Australia and, and around the world. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the other areas, um, uh, you know, pub, public health security, yes, definitely we're growing in, uh, in awareness. Um, it's a, it's a huge, uh, it's a huge area. And then, uh, all things China, um, that we have, uh, enormous opportunities for, for market awareness, uh, uh within uh, essentially the universe of, of buyers who care about a, a company that can reach, for example, uh, business owners all across China, uh, investors all across China, um, in major cities to really get a, a read on what the Chinese consumer is doing um, uh, inside China and, and how they may be affecting uh, other other countries as well. So a, lo a lot of work on that last file, but we're very mm -hmm. excited because we're seeing tangible success. So um, now let's, let's use 2020, but are you seeing a shift in the kind of clients you're getting? Like are you predominantly still, I mean, you were doing a lot with government organizations and starting to get into the financial markets. Is any of that sort of client type of client changed? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're going more toward a balance um, uh, among among our client base across the four uh, portfolios. There is some overlap. Um, uh, so, you know, there's actually, we have private sector clients on the public health security side um, and we have public health, uh, sorry, yeah, we have government clients on, on that side as well. So there's more of a balance, I would say. Um, the nature of our clients are increasingly data sophisticated, increasingly technically, um, you know, sophisticated, um, it, and, and that's a good thing. That's a great thing um, because uh, that enables uh, enables us to integrate our systems more quickly. Um, enables us to work with people who are creative and collaborative. So I would say, just from a qualitative perspective, that's that's been an important evolution. Um, so looking forward, 2021 and beyond, um, where, where do you see your greatest opportunities and maybe your greatest um, you know, challenges uh, for you guys? 
So on opportunities, it's products and, and, and partnerships and uh, sale, you know, sales discipline um, and, acro and, and across all those four uh, portfolios. And in particular, uh, you know, really making our mark in terms of um, uh, market awareness with respect to our data collection capabilities across China uh, and in the general field of, of, of public health security. The challenges uh, for us as, as a business um, are, you know, at, at this stage, um, you know, they're, they're pretty traditional uh, challenges. They're, they're about finding um, amazing people. Uh, really, when I, when I think about challenges, it's, it's really about people. Um, I want to make sure, I, I, I worry if we don't have someone sufficiently, you know, su sufficiently capable of meeting the needs of X client. So I'm always on the scout um, for, for that. And uh, so I, 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 that it's not like an elemental risk or anything. I'm very pleased that, that we have such great people who want to work with us. But that, that is something that is always a challenge. And in particular, amid this virtual era, um, it's a benefit too, right? Because you get the world of people that you have access to. Um, but, but you're always, always on the hunt for, for amazing people. I, I don't want to stump you with a weird question, but you guys gather all sorts of weird and crazy information. Is there any tidbit of information that you think is uh, entertaining or something that, uh, you know, the average person that's listening right now would, would find interesting? Thank you. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a lot, but Daniel, you're familiar with some of our, um, you've been looking at some of the, the, the finance related data recently. So maybe, maybe that might re resonate. We're, yeah. Okay. Daniel, where are the markets going? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, I, that's, a, we've been looking at it and, you know, we have um, sentiment data kind of uh, man or woman on the street, but it seems right now that the markets are, are divorced from any logic or reason. So, you know, even when we have a hypothesis of where things are going, you, you, you check the, the stickers and they're all over the place. So, uh, I wish I had the magic eight ball, but, um, you know, we ask the questions, we think that certain things are going a certain way and all of a sudden something pops or, or takes a dive and there's no rhyme or reason for it. So uh, we're con continuing to watch it and, and we're seeing what, what we can uh, glean from that. But these are some unusual times, no doubt, in the past uh, month or so. I don't have any answers for that. Paul. Yeah, it, it's good to realize that the data you guys are collecting is uh, is is confirming that things are crazy. Good. Um, listen, I know you guys have to wrap up, and we don't have much time left. But Neil is, and Daniel, is there any sort of message you want uh, our listeners to to walk away with uh, today? Oh, you know, just one one of gratitude. Um, uh, everyone on this call knows that entrepreneurialism is 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 hard, um, but it's the course path to prosperity. Um, so just, again, just want to thank you for, uh, for, for, for coming uh, and, and chatting with us today. And thank you, Paul and, and Trevor, uh, as always. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. We've uh, had Neil Seaman, uh, CEO of Rewe Corp, and Daniel M, CFO of Rewe Corp. Thank you both for joining us today. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye.